The other technique that is good to know about is this two time scale update rule. And it has to do with the training process. So you're now modifying your optimizer. The video is online. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this slide. But what is the big picture? The big picture is that throughout the training, you are not gonna be seeing your true gradients. Let it be for your discriminator objective function or your generator objective function. You never have access to your true gradients for computational reasons and memory reasons, memory-wise reasons. You are gonna be working with small batches of your data, and therefore all you have access to are uh, approximations or noisy approximations to your gradients. What else? Whenever you are training your GAN, you usually take multiple steps of your discriminator, one step of your generator. And this is equivalent to uh, having different learning rates for your discriminator and the generator. So your discriminator is learning faster. It has a higher uh, learning rate. But then you can borrow ideas from applied mathematics, which are about ODEs and perturbations to ODEs. Why is it perturbations? Because your gradients are noisy. You're gonna be perturbing this ODE. And this ODE, this is your loss function. These are the parameters and you have a dynamic over the parameters of your model. And these are the gradients of your loss. And it is perturbed because of these two noise terms. Using those ideas, you can actually prove that this two time scale update rule actually works in theory. In practice, that's a different story, but at least in theory, there is proofs that this is gonna converge. This is for uh, stochastic gradient descent. If you generalize it to Adam type of optimizers, then you still see that yes, that framework still works. And then you have a different ODE to work with. And that's gonna give you the dynamics of a heavy ball with friction. But I'm not interested in the theory. I'm not interested in how Adam optimizer is gonna be related to the dynamics of an ODE. These are nice observations. They are theoretical ones. But is what, what, what is gonna be really useful to us is this fresh inception distance. This is gonna give us a metric that you can use to tune your hyperparameters in a quantitative fashion, not qualitatively speaking, this image is better than the other image. So this is a big contribution. And what is the idea of fresh inception distance? Unlike inception score, which was a score, and the higher was better, this is a distance and the lower is gonna be better. The idea is take your data, generated data, push them through a pre-trained architecture. And we were doing the same thing when we were computing inception distance, or sorry, inception score. Take those generated images, push them through a pre-trained classifier, stop at some layer, and then compute the means. Do the same thing to your real images. Compute the means, compute the uh, covariance matrices, and then uh, assume that in the latent space, you have two normal distributions. One is coming out of a mean and a standard deviation of the generated images. The other ones are coming, the other distribution is coming out of uh, real images. Now compare the distance between two uh, normal distributions. And that's the fresh distance between two normal distributions. You are gonna look at the mean. So if the means are closer, these two normal distributions are getting closer to each other. But at the same time, the variance of these two distributions matter. And the idea is you want these two distributions to lie on top of each other. But be careful, things are not normal in the image space things are gonna be normal or closer to normal. If you take your, your images, push them through uh, a pre-trained neural network and vectorize them. So things are gonna be normal looking at the feature level. And therefore you can use fresh distance. And inception is because you're using inception architecture. This is clear. Okay, perfect. Any questions? So I guess like, is there a good way to interpret this number other than smaller is better? Things are gonna be consistent across models because whenever you are evaluating this metric, you are gonna be looking at the same inception architecture. So you're gonna be looking at the same in inception architecture. Your images are the same images. These are your validation data. 
the Inception architecture is the same architecture, and then uh, you are comparing apples to apples. Whatever your generator number one is generating, whatever your generator number two is generating, they are going to be treated equally. They are going to be evaluated on the same validation data. They're going to be evaluated using the same Inception architecture. And that's why people are consistent. They always use the architecture coming out of uh, Google, Google Net Inception architecture. But if you change this architecture to another one, you're right. Then people need to, uh, if you're writing a paper about a generator and you're claiming that your generator is the best, then you need to uh, generate images using your model, generate images using the other models, and then push them through the modification of this architecture and then write down your numbers. And then it's good enough. Lower being better is, uh, is good enough because that's all you want to prove in the end. You want to say that my generated images are better looking according to this distance. Does that answer your question? Okay, sure. Any other ones? Okay, perfect. And then you can look at fresh inception distance with two update rule giving you the best result. Now we can actually compare things together in a quantitative fashion. Let's move on. 